so let's get things straight. No, AI won't take your job. And yes, just like Rob Pike said, the current AI practices employed by these big tech corporations are completely unsustainable. In other words, the videos showing people spinning up dozens of coding agents to handle even trivial software tasks conveniently leave out one critical detail. The numbers don't add up, and the true costs of these products are orders of magnitude higher than most people realize. So sure, it's all fun and games when you have to pay almost nothing for it and then pretend computing is free. It'll stop being cute when the loan sharks come back asking for their money. It will stop being cute when big tech comes back asking for their money, plus a profit on top. This is like you are renting a Ferrari to drive to work and you can barely drive. It's fun for certain, but it's much more economically sound to just take the bus and actually learn how to drive. But, believe it or not, this is not the biggest problem AI is causing. The Internet of Bugs, which has one of the most grounded and insightful AI stances on this platform, recently posted two videos addressing the real elephant in the room. Because these AI tools are pretty much search engines on steroids, software developers are quickly losing one of the main skills needed to actually get good at programming. They no longer read documentation, they don't dig through source code, and they simply don't Google it. Believe it or not, Googling things was actually one of the most important skills you had to develop as a programmer. First, you had to break a vague problem into precise questions. Then, you actually had to look through various results and responses, trying to figure out which ones were wrong, outdated or misleading. Finally, you actually had to understand the solution in order to correctly apply it. These days, however, you can use the free version of GPT, paste in some random code, and let the model's guessing algorithm do the thinking for you. You get something that looks plausible, often works on the happy path, and call it a day. If you are not on the happy path, you continue prompting until you get to a version that compiles. But this is how we forget how to think. And here is your trivia for today. Awesome trivia. In 10 seconds. The brain is just like a muscle. The neural pathways responsible for reasoning, recall and problem solving strengthen with use and weaken with neglect. So you use it or you lose it. One of my favorite comedies of all time is this movie called Idiocracy. These days I find it funnier than ever because it slowly stops being a comedy and starts being a documentary. This is what happens when technology makes thinking optional. Back to the video, this optional thinking will decrease the baseline level of competence across the industry. And the signs are already here. Last week, the news that Tailwind laid off 75% of its engineering team made the rounds on all social platforms. What's really interesting with this one is that it's proof that AI will have side effects that no one actually considered. When you first hear about the layoff, you'll probably think that this is caused by a huge increase in software development productivity. After all, this is what all these snake oil salesmen keep selling. But this was far from the truth. The real problem is that developers don't Google for solutions anymore. If they don't search for solutions, they can't get to the Tailwind documentation pages. And if they don't reach for the documentation, they can't see the paid products and the upsells that actually keep the company alive. While Tailwind CSS is more popular than ever, its site visits have dropped and its business model collapsed. Developers get their HTML and Tailwind CSS classes directly from the model and the next generation of web developers won't even be aware that there is a difference between the two. But it gets worse. To add salt to injury, Google AI Studio just announced that they are happy to sponsor the Tailwind project in an ironic twist of events that highlights the exact problem we're talking about. The same AI ecosystem that helped collapse Tailwind's discovery and monetization funnel now steps in as a sponsor, effectively turning an independent developer tool into infrastructure subsidized by the very forces that undermined its sustainability. The same happened with Stack Overflow, which also made the news last week because, well, it is pretty much dead. I started to use Stack Overflow back in 2012 as a junior developer drowning in Java Enterprise hell. Back then, Stack Overflow was considered revolutionary because it was a far better alternative than the obscure forums and mailing lists you had to spend hours digging through. However, the reality is that in recent years, the platform became somewhat toxic towards newcomers and the friendly, helpful tone was replaced by gatekeeping and the infamous closed as duplicate message. On top of that, some of the business practices they engaged in recent years didn't reflect the software developer focus the platform was known for in the early days when Jeff Atwood was still involved. First, they decided to partner with OpenAI and provide them API access to its content so that OpenAI can use it to improve their models. Naturally, users have complained that their posts and work are being used to train AI models without an explicit opt-out option. 
Some users tried to delete or radically edit their historically high-impact posts in protest so they got suspended by moderators because removing or defacing valuable content goes against Stack Overflow's community rules. So, I don't believe that the impact of us losing Stack Overflow is as big as it would have 10 years ago, especially since they were already one foot out the door and trying to squeeze every last drop of value out of the platform. However, this is still collateral damage from a shift that prioritizes monetization and partnerships over community and learning. People are spending less time reading, learning, and actively trying to solve problems. And, trust me, regardless of what people will tell you, this is a bad thing across the board, and even worse in an industry that's built entirely on abstraction and accumulated knowledge. So it looks to me that the only thing we actually have to fear losing in 2026 isn't our jobs, but our ability to think. Please don't forget to smash all the buttons, check out some of my other videos, and, until next time, thank you for watching.